Hello, astronaut. It's block three, and we are going to start social emotional learning life lesson three, exploring people's emotions. So let's get right to it. Before I came to astronaut, I was a psychology professor at Eastern Florida State College for over 10 years. And in the college textbook, there was a fancy textbook definition of psychology, but I always used this simple version. Psychology is the study of what people think, feel, and do. Your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, they're all connected, and together they have the power to help us or hurt us in different ways. Since this lesson is called Exploring Emotions, let's talk about our emotions first. I really couldn't focus in school. I felt really, really sad. Uh, I could just see faces turning towards me. But there are times that I just go into my room and just... I have a breakdown. That was the most humiliating day of my, of my high school career. And he just comes in and goes, oh, all right, I'm going to do some reading. And I just feel like, like I'm nobody in the house. Eventually they left, and I was just all alone with myself. I felt like my heart had sunk. And she just kept saying, no, no. As I was walking out, I just started crying. Okay, the question at the end, am I normal? Yes, the answer is yes, you are normal. Normal feelings, uh, thoughts, all of those things, you are normal. Those feelings and emotions are normal. All people have emotions, that's what makes us normal and human. And teenagers feel and experience even more intense emotions and so that is why it's important to recognize and understand our emotions. I added some emoji feelings on this slide because the first thing we need to recognize in a tough situation is how we feel. You know feelings are not right or wrong they are the feeling you feel and it's okay to feel them but we need to recognize what we are feeling because, because again, they're going to affect our thinking and our actions. Interesting that some of us have what I call go-to emotions. That means in most situations, no matter what the situation is, you may react similar. For some of us, our go-to reaction um, is to get angry, aggressive. Something happens and we just get mad. Others, the go-to emotion is sad or depressed. Your actual emotion in that situation, it might be that you're disappointed or you're embarrassed or you were hurt, but you revert to that go-to of maybe mad or really sad. It's good to be aware of that. Be aware of, of our emotions and be, be very careful in how you proceed because emotions are powerful. They affect what we think and what we do. And we need to pay close attention to our thoughts and actions during this time. Why am I feeling this way? What is going on in my head? And act with caution or our emotions can get us into trouble. Okay, so when something happens, thoughts create feelings, Feelings create behavior. Behavior reinforces thoughts. Let's use an example. You have a hard math class. Maybe you are sitting in a math class right now, now and you are actually dealing with this example. What are your thoughts in regards to this hard class? Are you thinking, this is too hard, I can't do this, oh, I'm going to fail, I'm not smart enough? These thoughts create feelings. 
feelings of being overwhelmed, maybe defeated, feeling depressed, frustrated, that this class just makes you feel stupid. Well, now you have these feelings and they affect or create behaviors or actions. What happens? You, it's too hard, you think you're gonna fail, you feel stupid, and so what do you do? How do you act or behave? You give up, you stop trying, you show up late to class, you don't do your homework. And this is where I said you had to be careful because you know what happens in this situation? You end up doing poorly in class. Let's be clear, you didn't fail because you were dumb. You failed because of your behavior, your actions. You gave up. This is an example of how we get stuck doing the wrong thing and it hurts us. It all starts with what we call self-talk, negative self-talk or bad thinking. So that's bad, but it doesn't stop there. That behavior then goes back and reinforces those bad thoughts that you originally had in your head, that I can't do it, I'm not smart enough, and they make those thoughts bigger. And the next time you're in a hard class, you don't even bother trying. That your negative cycle has made you believe these negative, untrue thoughts. And that is what we call the cycle of failure. When we are in a tough situation, we need to identify what we feel and ask ourselves what our negative, negative self-talk we have. Talk it through. Yes, this is a hard class, but you know what? I've done hard things before, and you're right. It's not going to be easy, but if I put the work into it, I can succeed. Changing your thought changes your feelings. Now you may feel determined or focused. Thinking you can do it and feeling determined then affects your behavior. You start to try. You take good notes. You ask if you can see the teacher for help. You ask a, a, a student that's good in the class to help you at lunch. And these actions, they help you. You pass the class. You prove that behavior proves those positive thoughts to be true. That if you work hard, you can succeed. And then it gives you a sense of uh, pride. Those feelings of determination turn into pride. And then the next time you try harder. This is the cycle of success. Did you know all of this was going in your head and affects your behavior? If you don't know, you have to talk to yourself. Um, you should. I don't know if you practice talking to yourself, but you might want to try it. You might need to say when you start feeling these negative feelings and negative thoughts, whoa, hold up. Okay, so let's try to use another example. Somebody bumps into you in the hall and drops your books. So you bump into, you, somebody bumps you in the hallway on when you're switching classes and you drop your books. What might you think about that? What are your thoughts in the moment in that situation? He pushed me on purpose. Who does he think he is? This guy is looking for a fight. Okay, this is where you say, hold up, girl, or chill, bro, right? Because you may need to change your thinking or you're going to get yourself in trouble. Look at him. Do you even know the person? Maybe it was accident. Was he just in a hurry to try to get to class? Is this person or situation, is it even worth getting worked up about? Listen to yourself talk and talk back to yourself if you need to, because your thinking is going to affect your feelings, okay? Sometimes we feel that emotion first. We get pushed, 
We drop our books and we immediately get emotionally charged or fired up, this angry frustration, we just get real mad. But changing your thinking can actually change the way you feel. If you look at the situation, anger in this situation is actually a sign of insecurity because maybe you're embarrassed you dropped your books or you have some fear of being threatened. Take a moment, rethink. Instead, you could be feeling a sense of pride and confidence because you were the strong one in the situation. You used self-discipline and you were the better person. At the very least, changing your thinking here, you may not feel anything at all in regards to the situation because it's really no big deal. Two different ways of thinking, two sets of feelings. One can hurt you, one can help you. In the first scenario, you are so angry, you get in the guy's face. You yell and you shove him back. And you end up getting into a fight. This bump in the hall now has cost you 10 days suspension. And chances are, this is going to cause an ongoing problem with this person for the next four years. It would be better to take a breath, laugh it off, no problem, dude. Maybe take a, uh, make a joke about uh, following the directional arrows a little more carefully and just keep walking. Same scenario, two different outcomes. One can hurt you, one can help you. Okay, time to make it real again. Take out those avid notes. Um, the teacher should have an extra paper, an extra piece of avid notes for you if you need one. Draw vertical lines to create four columns on your paper as shown above. Write a real and personal situation. Could be a current one or a recent one. And it could even be that tough situation that you wrote about in life lesson number one. Write this situation in column one. Using the process we just discussed, go through your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. Once you write in each column, go back and look at what you wrote. And if need be, take time to change your thinking and feelings to make a more positive outcome with your actions. This assignment will conclude lesson three. When you are finished, add this paper to the front of your binder. Teachers, please allow time to complete this assignment. You can press pause and then stop the presentation when appropriate. Enjoy the rest of your class.